Vectique couldn't come, so I came instead. You have called, and I have answered. You sought the Harbinger of Doom. I am he, little sorcerer. I am your doom. I am Scarbrand. I am your death. From Scarbrand, summoned forth by the foolishness of Grey Seer Thankwall. Scarbrand, known also as the Exiled One, the Wrathful Reaper, or the Drinker of Blood, was once the greatest of all Korn's demons. An eternity of battle in the Blood God's name had brought Scarbrand victories uncounted. It was he who tore down the gates of Sir Nesha's first palace and visited ruin therein. It was he who led the Eighth Hosts of Murder to their triumph over the combined armies of the other Chaos Gods. In all the endless years of Korn's existence, no other had piled so many skulls before the Skull Throne or spilled the blood of so many warriors and innocents alike. Thus did Scarbrand enjoy Korn's favor like no other, an honor which would eventually lead to his downfall from grace. Ever since his exile, in all of history, there have been none to serve the Lord of Skulls as completely as Scarbrand. He has taken mountains and mountains of skulls for the Blood God, and filled vast oceans with gore. He has shaken the foundations of eternity with his wrath, and left a trail of slaughter across existence. Yet still, Korn refuses to rescind his hated decree. There is little regret in the Blood God's black heart, and he spares none for Scarbrand, who in tortured exile serves the Lord of Skulls more completely than ever. I will rip the bones from your body and leave your skin to rot. But your skull I will give to the Skull God, and it will be one among the multitude. From Scarbrand, the Exiled One. Alas, no being could enjoy such triumphs forever, and so proud was Scarbrand that it was a simple task for Zinj to fan the embers of his hubris. One dark day, when Korn's back was turned and his attention elsewhere, Scarbrand's fierce pride grew hot and, blinded by rage, he smote the Blood God a mighty blow. Powerful beyond measure was he, and he had toppled cities with but one blow apiece. But even he could not pierce Korn's brazen armor. Only the smallest of chinks was cut into the Blood God's armor. But even this was sufficient to draw the terrible fury of Korn's gaze. Incandescent with wrath, Korn seized the demon by the throat. The Blood God cursed Scarbrand's name and choked all personality from him, leaving only the bottomless rage that had caused him to attack. Climbing the uppermost tower of the Brass Citadel, Korn cast forth his arm and hurled the demon deep into the realm of chaos, banishing the Bloodthirster from his presence. For eight days and nights, Scarbrand plummeted, a fiery comet of ill omen streaking across the unchanging sky. 
The impact of the Bloodthirster's landing gouged a canyon in the landscape and left his wings tattered and torn. Since that fateful day, Scarbrand has wandered the mortal and immortal realms, droning his sins in the blood of the slain, though he no longer has the wit to fully understand why. Frozen in the moment of that rage-spurred betrayal, he has become Wrath Incarnate, a restless fury that cannot be stopped. Wherever he treads, order and discipline are replaced with anarchy as those in his path drown in feelings of empty loathing and unrestrained savagery. Even the most rational of beings cannot resist the corruption of Scarbrand's madness. Fast friends and firm allies tear at one another with wild abandon. Craven and brave beings alike claw at their foes without regard for their own lives. Through this anarchy, he runs rampant, twin axes hacking and cleaving until there is no one left to kill. His tortured roars echo around the battlefield, waves of pure rage infused with enough force to shatter buildings and pulverize flesh. From then on, he became nothing more than a vessel filled with unreasoning hatred and rage, empty of any thoughts or personality of what was once Korn's greatest chosen. The Battle of Karak Onkul. No! You shall not escape me so easily. You will burn, Mage Rat, and then you will scream and scream and scream. From Skarbrand during the Battle of Karak Ankul. Whether the being known as Skarbrand was still within the good grace of Korn when he descended upon the mortal plane to ravage the dwarf hold of Karak Ankul is unclear. What was certain was that by the foolish efforts of Grey Seer Thankul, who in his attempt to summon forth the infamous vermin lord Vectik into the mortal plane, had mistakenly summoned forth the legendary Bloodthirster instead. What the foolish Grey Seer failed to realize was that the magical artifact known as the Hand of Vectik, which he tried to use in his summon ritual, contained a hidden mark of corn upon its palm. A mark carved by its previous owner, Grey Seer Thratznik, as an act of vengeance against the Under Empire that had abandoned him to his fate of lonely isolation and eventual starvation many decades ago. Freed upon the mortal plain, Scarbrand wrought a terrible carnage amongst the battlefield, where dwarfs and Skaven alike fought each other and their allies in gruesome displays of mad rage and uncontrollable bloodshed due to the unnatural demonic presence of the Bloodthirster. It was only thanks to the efforts of Master Engineer Clarak Bronzehammer who set off a demolition charge which saw a massive axe of Valaya fall down and sink its blade into the flesh of the Bloodthirster's head. Did the Dwarf Hold survive the demonic onslaught? 
Thankwo, having had enough of risking his life for the ambitions of others, fled the battlefield right after he blasted the master engineer with a wave of warp lightning and saw his body fall from the statue of Valaya and upon the rocky hard floor many stories below. Before Scarbrand was sent back into the realm of chaos, he whispered to Thankwall that should he have need of him again, he would be waiting. Next, the dread demon princess of Corn, known also as the Gore Queen and, of course, the Bloody. See you soon. <laughs>